please welcome Professor Nancy Ip. Well, I feel a privilege uh, to have the opportunity to make a second appearance in this forum. Uh, this time uh, to share with you some of our ongoing efforts uh, in targeting synaptic dysfunction uh, in our neurodegenerative diseases. So the research uh, interest in my lab actually spans uh, the spectrum of basic and translational. Uh, understanding uh, the molecular mechanisms that uh, underlie neurodevelopment and plasticity remain to be our core interest. Uh, but through basic research, we hope uh, to identify uh, potential mole molecular targets and also signaling pathways that uh, underlie uh, brain disorders. And leveraging on the drug discovery platforms that we have established over the years, uh, we hope to identify uh, interesting drug leads get, uh, that can be further uh, pursued for development. So Synapse is the specialized site uh, where brain cells communicate with each other. Uh, changes, undesirable changes at the synapse actually uh, have been observed in early stages of many neurological disorders. So it is believed that deregulation of synaptic plasticity uh, underlies the uh, onset uh, of neurological disorders, including uh, Alzheimer's disease. As you can see uh, in this uh, uh, diagram here, uh, if you look at the two uh, red circles, the red circles on the left uh, depicts uh, synaptic dysfunction. So it clearly precedes uh, the second red, uh, red circle, which uh, indicates uh, impairment in uh, cognitive uh, performance. So synaptic dysfunction perhaps is a, a potential uh, area that we can explore in order to come up with new therapeutics for Alzheimer's disease. Um, as uh, uh, Dr. Pfeiffer uh, very elegantly mentioned in her talk, there are certain strategies uh, for developing Alzheimer's disease therapeutics. Those on the market are simply uh, 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 relieving the symptoms, and there are, of course, current uh, drug development strategies uh, targeting uh, the uh, amyloid uh, pathway, targeting the tau pathway, and also neuroinflammation. The recent uh, success uh, with uh, uh, beta amyloid uh, monoclonal antibody uh, is extremely encouraging because it shows that it can improve the cognitive impairment uh, in patients with mild, cognitive, uh, with mild uh, cognitive impairment and also uh, early AD. Now, are there alternative approaches that uh, can be explored? Um, to come up with a therapeutic treatment for AD. And I'd like to discuss with you uh, for the rest of the talk on synaptic dysfunction. So it is known that uh, memory deficit in Alzheimer's disease uh, is attributed to the loss of synapses in the hippocampus. Now, recent data on the genome-wide uh, uh, gene expression analysis of early AD patients reveals uh, differential expression uh, of genes that are associated with synaptic functioning. Soluble A-beta oligoma has been demonstrated to bind to excitatory uh, synapses, and uh, through various cascades, it leads to um, synaptic deficits and also uh, cognitive uh, dysfunction. So can we find ways to target uh, these various uh, signaling pathways and come up with novel uh, drug treatments? So my lab has been working on understanding the molecular basis of synaptic plasticity, and I'd like to propose to you that a cell surface protein called FA4 uh, can be a potential target uh, for modulating synaptic plasticity. So our work uh, shows that activation of this particular receptor tyrosine kinase can lead to retraction of dendritic spines. Dendritic spines is where the excitatory synapse uh, resides. Now, it accomplished that uh, through uh, the signaling pathway that I indicated on the diagram. A second mechanism that can be triggered by uh, activation of FA4 receptor lead to degradation of the neurotransmitter receptor, AMPA receptor. And so through these two mechanisms, the consequence is that there is reduction of neurotransmission and also a synaptic strength. So our work uh, shows that uh, FA4 is a negative regulator of synaptic plasticity. Now, is there any link to Alzheimer's disease? 
we found that there's actually some evidence that associate uh, FA4 to synaptic dysfunction in a disease. Um, it has been reported that there is a SNP identified uh, approximately proximal to the FA4 gene that can be associated uh, with the disease. There's also changes in um, the expression of the receptor in mild cognitive impaired uh, and also AD patients. So we therefore uh, went on to explore this possibility and look at uh, the changes in FA4 activation using Alzheimer's disease mouse model, APPPS1. And, uh, if you look at the left panel, what you see actually is that if we isolate hippo, uh, hippocampal synaptosomal fractions uh, and compare the extent of activation uh, of FA4 in the wild type versus APPPS1 uh, mice, we can clearly see that uh, FA4 is hyperactivated, and we uh, assess that looking at the tyrosine phosphorylation of FA4. Now, in hippocampal brain slides, if we add uh, a beta oligomer to the culture, we can also see that there is an induction in the uh, tyrosine phosphorylation of FA4, indicating that uh, FA4 is hyperactivated. So, is FA4 a potential target uh, that we should further consider, since we now show that actually FA4 is hyperactivated in the Alzheimer's disease mouse model. So we went on to demonstrate that if we block uh, FA4 signaling by adding a 12-amino acid peptide called KYL, we found that the um, hyperactivation of FA4 receptor uh, in response to A-beta oligomer treatment can be totally abolished. In vivo, if we administer um, uh, the KYL peptide using ICV uh, infusion approach uh, for a few weeks, we found that the impaired long-term potentiation, which is a, uh, the underlying uh, basis of learning and memory, in the AD mouse model, uh, long-term potentiation is impaired. However, if we infuse the KYL peptide to block FA4 signaling, we can see rescue of this impaired long-term potentiation. So therefore, we come up with this working model. We believe that A-beta oligomer can somehow uh, apparently activate FA4 receptor, and it leads to uh, uh, impairment in neuronal communication and also impairment in learning and memory. Exactly what is the mechanism uh, involved, we are still working very hard on it, but there, it it can involve um, the degradation of the neurotransmitter receptor. It can involve uh, changing uh, the level of glutamate at the synapse. Nonetheless, our data uh, suggests that if we can somehow find ways to inhibit the FA4 uh, pathway, we might be able to restore synaptic plasticity uh, in the uh, AD mouse model and come up with potential uh, therapeutic interventions uh, for this disease. So there are, of course, you know, different approaches one, one can take to look for an effective uh, inhibitor of FA4. So we consider the various approaches, including small molecules, siRNA, uh, peptide uh, to block FA4 activation, soluble receptor decoy, uh, such as the uh, extracellular domain of uh, FA4 linked with FC, so we're working on all these approaches, but for today's talk, I just want to share with you the findings that we have obtained using small molecule. So we leverage on the um, drug screening platform that we have established over the years using traditional Chinese medicine as our starting uh, uh, material. So we prepare extracts, we identify small molecules uh, within the extracts, within the mixtures, and uh, we use activity-guided assay uh, to look at the, um, uh, the single compounds, and we can optimize it to come up with uh, improved uh, uh, leads. So the small molecule that we have identified uh, uh, using virtual screening, uh, molecular docking approach, um, there were quite a few, actually. So we have a screen and FDA uh, compound library and came up with a number of hits. 
We have also screened our in-house traditional Chinese medicine uh, database and come up with a few hits. Now, the one that we chose to uh, continue to work on is called rinkofilin. So it is a natural compound that we um, isolated uh, from a Chinese medicine called Ancaria rinkofilla. And um, we observed that following oral administration of this small molecule uh, to the uh, 80 mouse uh, uh, model, there was no uh, weight loss or gross uh, toxicity uh, after six months. And we also performed preliminary pharmacokinetic uh, uh, profiling uh, studies to, to show that the small molecule can actually uh, penetrate the blood-brain barrier and achieve a, a certain concentration uh, in the brain. So encouraged by all these data, we then wanted to, to see, you know, uh, does uh, rinkofilin get to the site, that is, uh, get to the FA4 target site? And we look at, again, uh, the ability of rinkofilin uh, to affect uh, FA4 activation. As you can see on the uh, left-hand side of this diagram, um, I showed you before that in the APPPS1 mice, FA4 uh, is hyperactivated. Following in vivo uh, oral administration of rinkofilin, we were able to show that this hyperactivation is suppressed. So that shows target engagement uh, using this small molecule. We also look at the ability of the small molecule to uh, rescue the long-term potentiation impairment that is so characteristic in this uh, AD mouse. And again, we, sh we were able to see uh, that rinkofilin can rescue the impaired long-term potentiation in the mouse. Finally, we use behavioral tests uh, to uh, evaluate whether rinkofilin administration can uh, uh, restore the uh, impaired uh, uh, spatial memory. And the model that we use is called uh, Morris Water Maze. And we train the mouse to um, locate the hidden platform, which is in this particular quadrant. And then we remove the platform, and then we evaluate, you know, where um, does the mouse swim in the reservoir. So in the wild type, because the memory is intact, the mouse would, would spend a lot of time in this, uh, what we call the target quadrant. So if we evaluate the swimming, tra uh, the swimming path, we found that the mouse uh, spent 40% of the time in that particular quadrant. In the AD mouse uh, that shows impairment in memory, it only showed 20% uh, uh, of the time spent in that quadrant. However, for mice that were administered uh, with rinkofilin orally for five months, we uh, observed that actually the, the mouse tend to uh, spend more time in the target quadrant. So these results are very uh, encouraging, and we would uh, like to propose that um, in targeting synaptic um, a dysfunction uh, in AD, perhaps we can consider uh, the FA4 mediated uh, pathway. And FA4 uh, seems to be a druggable target. We can also consider the downstream signaling events uh, following uh, FA4 activation. Of course, FA4 is not the only uh, cell surface receptor uh, that uh, seems to bind to a beta oligoma. There are uh, other cell surface receptors that have been reported, and um, these are the uh, various signaling uh, pathways that have been identified. So we can consider perhaps a, a combination therapy. We can either target a single pathway, the FA4-mediated pathway, or we can consider uh, targeting different pathways uh, that are implicated in mediating the effect of a beta oligoma on synaptic dysfunction. And of course, you know, synaptic dysfunction is only part of the picture. Um, uh, the whole uh, process is uh, the whole process is very complex, and so we can also consider combination uh, therapy, not just looking at uh, synaptic uh, dysfunction, but also looking at this uh, whole plethora of events that. Uh, uh, might mediate uh, the uh, effect of um, uh, A beta oligoma and tau uh, in this uh, devastating disease. So, 
again, uh, for my own uh, research lab, we would like to uh, do more on understanding uh, the molecular basis uh, underlying synaptic function and what goes wrong you know, in a DC situation like Alzheimer's and whether we can come up with uh, novel uh, intervention approaches uh, to alleviate uh, the uh, disease and restore the, no the network to the normal situation. So uh, this is a picture of our campus in Hong Kong. Thank you very much for your attention.